Hello everyone. The topic of presentation is data link layer. So, why do we need to study data link layer? We all want our information to get where it is supposed to go quickly and without any problem. In network communication, this starts in the second layer, the data link layer. It regulates the flow of data. It provides flow control mechanism to avoid a fast transmitter from running a slow receiver by buffering the extra bit is provided by flow control. This prevents traffic jam at the receiver side. So what are we going to study? The data link layer which is responsible for transferring a datagram across an individual link will then examine important principles behind the protocols that provide these services which include framing, flow control, error control protocols. Now, what is data link layer? The data link layer is the second layer of OSI model of computer networking. This layer is the protocol layer that transfers data between adjacent network modes in a wide area network. Data link layer is most reliable node to node delivery of data. It forms frames from the packets that are received from network layer and gives it to the physical layer. It also synchronizes the information which is to be transmitted over the data. The examples of data link protocols are Ethernet for local area network, the point to point protocol. The data link layer has two sub layers, logical link control and media access control. Functions of data link layer. The, now let's discuss about the functions of data link layer. Framing. Frames are the streams of bits received from the network layer into manageable data units. This dimension of bit stream is done by data link layer. Flow control. A flow control mechanism to avoid a fast transmitter from running a slow receiver by buffering the extra bit is provided by flow control. This prevents traffic jam at the receiver side. Error control. Error control is achieved by adding a train at the end of the frame. Duplication of frames are also prevented by using this mechanism. Data link layer adds mechanism to prevent duplicable of frames. It also has protocols to determine which of the devices has control over the link. Flow control. What is flow control? The flow control is a technique for assuring that the transmitting entity does not overwhelm the receiving entity with data. When a data frame is sent from one host to another over a single medium, it is required that the sender and receiver should work at the same speed. That is, sender sends at a speed on which the receiver can process and accept the data. What if the speed of the sender or receiver differs? If sender is sending too fast, the receiver may be overloaded and data may be lost. So the type of mecha mechanism deployed to control the flow is stop and wait protocol. This flow controls mechanism forces the sender after transmitting a data frame to stop and wait until the acknowledgement of the data frame is received. Source waits for acknowledgement before sending next frame. The destination can stop flow by not sending acknowledgement. Works well for large frames. Stop and work protocol is inefficient for smaller frames. Framing. The next protocol is framing. Now, what do we understand by framing? At data link layer, it extracts message from sender and provides it to the receiver by providing sender and receiver's address. There are two types of framing, fixed size framing. In this, there is no need to provide boundaries to the frame. Length of the frame itself acts as limiter variable frame. In this, there is need to define size of the frame as well as beginning of the next frame. The flag bits with byte stuffing, flag bytes with bit stuffing. Since this can interfere with the framing, a technique called character stuffing is used. At the start and end of each frame is a flag bit consisting of a special bit pattern 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Whenever the sender's data link layer 
encounters five consecutive ones in the data, it automatically stuffs a zero bit into the outgoing bit stream. This is called bit stuffing. This is used to avoid confusion with data containing 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Bit stuffing used to avoid confusion with data containing 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. 0 inserted after every sequence of 5 ones. If receiver detects 5 ones after a 0, it checks next bit. If 0, then it is deleted. And if 1 and 7 bit is 0, it accepts as flat. If 6th and 7th bit is 1, sender is indicating a bot. Byte stuffing. In this method, frame starts and ends with a special character that marks the beginning and end of the frame. Each character begins with the ASCII character sequence and ends with the ASCII character sequence. Error control. Error control. It allows the receiver to inform the sender if a frame is lost or damaged during transmis transmit and coordinates the retransmission of those frames by the sender. Error control in the data link layer is based on automatic repeat requ request. It allows the receiver to inform the sender if a frame is lost or damaged during the transmission. Error control includes both error detection and error correction. When a data is transmitted over a channel, there is always a chance that some of the bits will be changed due to noise, signal distortion or attenuation. So the advantages of data link layer are the data link layer performs the error check using the frame check sequence FCS in the trailer and discards the frame if an error is detected. The, M the MAC layer allows the data link layer to provide the base data transmission vehicle and manage data flow control. It manages error checking and data flow over a network. The data link layer is used for the encoding, decoding and logical organization of data bits. The data packets are framed and addressed by this layer. Thank you.